videos on YouTube are for uh, geothermal heating and compost heating of a greenhouse. Unfortunately, I haven't had both uh, geothermal and compost heating in the same greenhouse for over two years now. So I've actually upgraded my greenhouse and now I have both systems ready for heating. I call it uh, Greenhouse 2.0 and I'm going to share it with you. I'll give a short history of my greenhouse heating adventures over the last three winters. In 2016, I built a small lean-to greenhouse attached to my screened-in patio. I added the first generation GAT or geothermal air heat transfer system to that greenhouse. You dig holes in the ground, pump air down the holes where it's warmed by the earth and then it returns to warm the greenhouse. I was the first on YouTube at least to show a vertical GAT system uh, that a person could dig by themselves. The other ones that you see on YouTube are usually horizontal systems dug by a backhoe. I added a simple compost heating system lined with, with sandbags. A simple uh, air-driven heat exchanger transferred heat from the hot compost pile to the greenhouse. In 2017, I removed the gas system and went all in for compost heating. I dug the compost chamber into the ground and then insulated the wells. Here's a summary of my 2018 greenhouse heating system. I converted the lower chamber back to a GAT system, but I've added an upper chamber, which is going to hold stackable bins filled with compost. These are easier to turn and uh, manipulate than a large compost pile. I'll also insulate the system with foam board, uh, but leave the compost chamber open to the greenhouse to get good heat, heat transfer. For the first generation gas system, I used a Seymour post hole auger to drill until I hit bedrock at 10 feet or three meters depth. The holes are six inches or 15 centimeters in diameter. I then ran a length of corrugated drainage pipe into the well. By attaching a four inch duct fan to the pipe, I forced cold air from the greenhouse into the hole. The warmed air returns to up the annulus of the well to heat the greenhouse. I've gotten a lot of constructive feedback from uh, viewers. One commenter noticed that, that my uh, GAT system simply doesn't touch enough volume of the warm underground to be efficient. He also says that the air emerging from my open hole system is going to increase the humidity of the greenhouse, which isn't good for a couple of reasons. Finally, he suggests using a U-shaped configuration to maximize the airflow. Some other commenters have harped on the effects of radon, some more tactfully than others. I don't think radon's a problem, especially since I don't live inside this greenhouse. As long as the hole is open to the dirt though, a radon could conceivably be present. For the 2018 GAT system, I drill holes right next to each other. Then I run a U-shaped section of pipe into the hole, fill the void with dirt, and then install the duct fan like before. In theory, it works just like the other system, warming the cold greenhouse air, uh, as it uh, descends into the, into the hole and then returns to the greenhouse. Because the U-shaped vertical GAT system is a closed system, it won't increase the humidity or pick up radon. And you can use it with a shallow water table or if you have a weak soil that collapses when you drill. The new system should also achieve smoother airflow. Compared to a one-hole system, two holes touches a larger soil volume, so it also transfers more heat. As for the disadvantages, you do twice the amount of digging for a single geothermal well. And counterintuitively, there's actually a smaller volume of air returning in the four inch pipe than up the annulus of the six inch wells in the first generation system. But I'm betting that the U-shaped tubes will move air more efficiently. In a perfect world, we would dig a U-shaped gas system to a maximum depth of at least 20 feet or six meters with a large distance between the inlet and the outlet. Unfortunately, this, uh, this well is impossible to drill using my equipment. If you have a way of, that you know of drilling such a hole, please let me know in the comments. So how the heck do you drill two holes very close to one another? The holes need to be perfectly drilled, uh, touching one another yet far enough apart that they're two separate holes. So here's a very useful hack. You get a two foot or 60 centimeter long section of uh, uh, PVC pipe, six inches in diameter or 15 centimeters, and attach a long rope to it. Make sure you don't drop the rope down the hole. So here's the idea. You dig a couple feet in one hole, then move the pipe to the other hole and then drill two more feet. You know you're doing a perfect job when the post hole auger lightly taps uh, the pipe on each turn. I drilled four pairs of holes in this way and it wasn't terribly hard. 
Here's a clip uh, showing me dig my hole one-handed because I'm holding the ca camera with the other hand. My PVC pipe tool is in the other hole. You just turn the auger and pull out the dirt. When you're ready to switch holes, just pull up the PVC pipe tool and move it to the other hole. Here's a pair of holes drilled to about six feet or 1.8 meters. The holes are pretty close together, but about halfway down, you can see a little ridge in between the two holes. You'll need to carefully knock this dirt ridge out of the way or you won't be able to get a full section of air pipe down the hole. When you're finished digging, make a U-shape with your corrugated drainage pipe and jam it down the hole. This part is definitely easier to do with two hands. Here's a clip showing the finished U-shaped vertical GAT system with uh, four pipes in place. The duct fans have been attached to the air pipe with uh, screws. This photo of the GAT chamber shows how the duct fans are oriented. The two wells closest to the greenhouse actually pull or push air into the holes that I've cut in the insulation wall connecting the GAT chamber to the greenhouse. Now let's move on to the compost heating system. I built a box out of one by three inch lumber. It has a volume of about 60 cubic feet or 1.7 cubic meters. The insulated lid from the 2017 compost chamber fits nicely on the box. Here's the compost box installed over the GAT chamber. I've built a subfloor out of two by four and one by three lumber. The subfloor has to hold a static load of about 400 pounds or 180 kilograms of compost. Above the compost box, I mounted a sheet of multi-wall polycarbonate permanently to the greenhouse. I then bolted the compost box to the greenhouse. I purchased uh, 12 stackable bins from Acro Mills. They were $23 each from Amazon and included free shipping. I spent more than I wanted, but I really wanted to test a modular concept of the compost. It's hard to turn a huge pile of compost. With a modular approach, I can lift out each bin to turn the compost. My biggest worry is that the leaf and coffee mixture won't reach the necessary temperature of 140 degrees. Finally, I'll cover the compost box with a 10 by 12 foot tarp. I actually run the rear center eyelet of the tarp through the bolt that attaches the compost box to the greenhouse so it won't blow away. I've then attached long nails to the compost box and stretched the tarp uh, tightly to minimize air invasion. I've insulated the compost box with a rigid foam board. I hope you enjoyed that uh, video. Um, check back soon. I'm going to have some, uh, as I get compost going and get the uh, greenhouse sealed up, I'll report back with some data. I've got a four, um, four channel temperature logger that I'm going to use. I'm going to measure the temperature underground all throughout the uh, greenhouse. So I really get some good numbers this year to see if this, if this system is performing well.